Welcome to the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast, where high achieving, goal oriented rebel women come to learn how to live a vibrant and fulfilling life without requiring alcohol to get through it. No labels, no judgments, no saying you'll never drink again, just real proven methods to help you stop rebelling against yourself with alcohol so you can drink less and do more. I'm your host, Angela Masenik. Let's dig in. Welcome to episode 115, What is Mindset Coaching? Well, hello, everybody. How are y'all? I'm doing fantastic. I am right in the middle of one of my favorite free challenges that I do, the Wine Free Work Week Challenge, and y'all are showing up. <laughs> We've got, I think we had 1,300 women join this challenge, and I only promote it for like a week, so it's super fun to see how many people sign up and what the engagement in inside this um, challenge is like, and we have a private Facebook group, and you know, every day there's a challenge, and I give you this little small assignment to do, and then you post your work um, in the Facebook group, and then you show up to a daily Facebook Live, and you get to ask me questions, and I get to coach you, and you get to be around amazing, inspiring, beautiful ladies all working on the same thing, and then I've got some of my clients coming in there and supporting others and cheering people on too. It's just a really fun, fun experience. So if you're in there, I'm glad. Hope you're having fun. I'm having a good time. And if you didn't sign up for this, you're definitely missing. So make sure you are on my email list to hear about the next Wine Free Work Week Challenge. I'm thinking I'm going to be doing them quarterly. This was the first one that I did in 2021, and I'll probably do a few more for the rest of the year. But the best way to get in the know of that stuff is being on my email list. That's where I make those announcements first. And you can sign up to get on my email list at AngelaMasenic.com. And there will be a little pop-up that you can click on. I'll send you my top um, podcast episodes delivered to your email. And then you'll be in the system and you'll get to be the first people that know when I do this type of stuff. And then the next thing I want to tell you before I forget is next week I am doing two free classes called It's Not About the Alcohol. I recently did this class last month and it was really, really well received. So I teach and talk about this on the podcast all the time. It's not so much about figuring out what's the right combination of not drinking or drinking on the weekends or not drinking during the weekends or during the weekdays, but it's about figuring out why you are drinking in the first place. And that's what I help you figure out as a coach. Um, We got to get to the root of the reason why you're drinking, and it's not so much about the alcohol itself. So this class is called It's Not About the Alcohol, and I help you understand why you in your specific situation might be over drinking and give you some tools to help stop it. So it's super fun. It's about a 75-minute class. It's free. You can ask me questions, engage with me a little bit, and then... I'm going to tell you how you can join my six-month coaching program. So the link to sign up there is in the show notes as well. And um, this week, I want to talk to you all about mindset coaching. So mindset coaching is the modality of coaching that I teach and coach um, in all of my coaching programs. It was the way I was trained. Um, And I want to kind of go over that because there's different modalities in coaching. And a lot of times... I've mentioned this in the past, like, you know, some coaching programs or diet programs, they tell you what to do. And what I do is different than that. I tell you how to look at your thoughts and your mind and your mindset to achieve your goals, to lose weight, to stop over drinking, to improve your relationships, whatever the issue is. We always start with what you're thinking to solve that problem. And Sort of backing up here, I use a model that Brooke Castillo from the Life Coach School put together. Um, She didn't put together human behavior, but she put together this model. It's called the self-coaching model that we're trained on. I'm certified life coach through the Life Coach School, and we're trained and certified using this model in how we coach our clients. So basically, there's five components to this model. Okay, There's circumstances that we have in our lives that are things outside of us, like our jobs, um, people, um, events in the world, things that happen, like the pandemic or an election or a natural disaster or um, somebody gets sick, okay? So there's external circumstances that everybody has in their lives. 
And then we have thoughts about these external circumstances. And then the third part of the model is our feelings. Our thoughts create our feelings. So what you think about, let's say, the pandemic, right? The, say your thought is the pandemic sucks, and then you feel anxious when you think that thought, right? So the, And then the anxiety that you feel when you think the pandemic sucks causes you to do something. So when you feel anxious, when you think about the pandemic, what do you do? Some people drink, some people eat, some people scroll, <laughs> doom scroll or doom research and like go find articles about when the pandemic's going to end, how you can get a COVID shot, all the things, right? From that anxious place. And then all of those actions that you take, that's the fourth part of the model, all of those actions that you take create a result in your life. That's the fifth part of the model. And the result is usually a reflection of what you are thinking, right? So if you're thinking the pandemic sucks, that's going to create a result for you in your life of you not doing the things that you want to do, right? So that's the model. It's circumstance, thought, feeling, action, result. And we use this model to get awareness usually. That's that's the main purpose of the model, okay? And when I talk about mindset coaching, we use the model to see what we are thinking about these circumstances in our lives, okay? And sometimes we're not really aware of our thoughts yet, so it might be a feeling that you're first aware of. So we would plug your feeling into the model and then build the model around there. So when I feel this way, this is what I do. And I know I'm feeling this way because this is what I'm thinking, okay? And I coach you through that and I show you how your current thinking is showing up for you and creating results for you today. And we can also use the model to look at how we've created results in our past. And we use the model to create new results for ourselves in the future. And it's just a really um, nice way to kind of organize all of this stuff and, and human behavior and how the mind, you know, creates things for us in our lives. Okay. So other coaching programs, and, you know, I'm not saying all other coaching programs or, or diets or things like this do this, but they tell you what to do. They might say, okay, go make a meal plan, um, stop drinking for 30 days, exercise five days a week, um, measure out all your food, um, blah, blah, blah. This is exactly what you need to eat. Get rid of all processed foods and, you know, make sure you're 70% uh, proteins, (laughs) 20% fat, 10%, whatever. Like they give you a very specific plan and an action list to do. And then they kind of like hold you accountable and like, okay, have you been following your plan and why or why not? And, you know, you might talk a little bit about what you're thinking and stuff, but there's no coaching on, okay, so what are you feeling about following the plan? And and when you had a bad day at work and you felt stressed, how come you didn't follow your plan? (laughs) You know, like we're not getting to the root. Those, Those types of coaching modalities don't usually get to the root of why we're not following the plan or what you're, why you're not doing the things that you want to do. And so mindset coaching and the way I coach helps you understand why exactly you're doing what you're doing. So when you use the model and you put in the actions that you're taking in the, in the action line of the model or the actions that you're not doing, right? When you feel anxious or stressed or worried, right? We look at that and then we back it up and like, okay, so if I'm not following through, if I'm not eating the foods that I want to eat, or I'm overeating, or I'm over drinking, or, you know, I'm yelling at my kids, or I'm slamming covered doors, or avoiding people, okay? Those are actions. Why am I doing those things? Well, let's look at how you're feeling, right? So like your feelings are driving these actions. That's just human behavior. Feelings get you to take action. And when we do that, then we have awareness of what's happening, right? And then we back it up, okay, so I know that my feelings drive my actions, and I know that my feelings are generated by my thoughts. So what am I thinking right now, okay? And that would be that thought that you would uncover, it's like the pandemic sucks, okay? Whatever the situation is, whatever whatever is happening for you, whatever you're presenting me with is your problem, okay? And then we look at it, I'm like, okay, so this is the thought, the pandemic sucks, it makes you feel anxious when you think it, and this is what you do when you feel anxious. Now we have something to work with. Now we can kind of see the bigger picture here. So your mindset about the pandemic is the problem. It's not the pandemic, right? And we can see that by using this model. 
Now, I could tell you what to do instead of um, helping you figure out how to think about it differently. I could say, well, um, don't over drink. Go fill your evening with a bunch of activities so that you, you don't have to think about alcohol. I could tell you what to eat to help you figure out how to lose weight easier, right? I could tell you what to do. But if I were to do that here in this situation, it wouldn't help you because you'd still have the same thoughts and feelings. And where people get hung up on this and want me to make it easier for them <laughs> is they just want me to tell them what to do. And it just doesn't work because I can tell you what to do all day long. But if you don't get awareness around what you're thinking and feeling, it's not going to work because you're going to start doing something and it's not going to be as effective as if you could change your thoughts and generate different feelings that would drive those actions in a more natural way. Okay, so let me give you this example. So say you're, you're thinking and ruminating that this pandemic sucks, okay? And instead of thinking the pandemic sucks, maybe you're open to thinking that, oh, the pandemic will end soon, or the pandemic won't last forever, or there's been some good things about the pandemic, or, yep, the pandemic isn't fun, but I've learned some things, or... Um, you know, you could just think about the pandemic some thought differently that makes you feel less anxious, right? So if I think there's some good things about the pandemic or the pandemic will end soon, I feel more like acceptance. I feel more compassion. I feel more hopeful, right? Versus when I think the pandemic sucks, I feel anxious, so if I can shift my mindset about the pandemic to a, a thought that I can believe and, and know to be true for me today and feel more hopeful, well, that hopeful feeling is going to drive a whole different set of actions, okay? So that would feel more natural than for me to take those actions because the energy behind it, the feeling behind it will help be, be more fruitful, to not over drink, right? If I don't change my mindset and I still think this pandemic sucks and I feel anxiety and then I sit there in the end of the day filled with the anxiety and I'm trying not to drink, it's just going to be extra hard. Are you guys following me on that? But if I think the pandemic will end soon and I feel hopeful, well, that hopeful feeling is not going to lead me to want to escape that feeling. Okay, so that's how we and how I coach in the modality that I coach on mindset helps you be more successful. If you don't do that work, you you're fighting like an uphill battle because you still have these old thoughts and feelings that um, are still there and they're still present in your mind. And you now you just added a list of things to do on top of all of it. And I don't believe in, in action line coaching at all. Like. I think it's helpful for me to give you like some parameters and some things to start doing when you first start this work, like make sure you journal every day, write out your thoughts, right? Read books, fill your brain with new information about how to stop over drinking, get coaching. All of that is telling me what you, you could do to help you, but the core of what I teach and what mindset coaching is, is first getting aware of your current thoughts about any situation in your life. You have to know where you're starting from in order to change. Okay. And that's actually a line that I got from Jen Sincero. She wrote um, a really awesome book called Badass Habits. And she talks all about of how to create new habits in your life to get the results that you want. And it's like, she talks about having a map, right? So like if you were driving somewhere you've never been before, and you didn't know what the starting line was or the starting point, it would be really hard to get there, right? Like, <laughs> it would take you a really long time if you didn't know where you were starting from. And when we look at coaching and how I coach my clients, we need to be aware of what we're currently thinking in order for me to help you get to where you want to go. You know, a lot of people talk about uh, mantras and positive thinking, right? And I don't really believe in mantras or just having positive thoughts, you know, and sort of like steamrolling your own brain and your own uh, lived experience, right? I believe in like understanding what you're currently thinking about the situation, get aware of that, and then decide if you want to change your thoughts to get a different result in your life. You're always in control of that though. And you, the, the best, most effective coaching 
comes from the thoughts that you ask your brain to think. I can give you new thoughts to think all day long, but unless they resonate with you and they come from you, it's not as effective. Just like I could give you a list of action items to take all day long, you could go out and try those things, but if your thoughts and feelings aren't in alignment to naturally drive those actions that you would take to accomplish your goal, you're going to have a lot of start and stops and you're going to feel frustration and you're going to wonder why it's not working and then you're going to give up. That's a very normal pattern. That's why diets don't work, right? That's why just taking a 30-day break from alcohol and focusing on not doing something and not backing it up and looking at why you're doing it in the first place doesn't work, right? You're like putting a band-aid on the problem. So when I talk about mindset coaching and when you come and ask coaching from me, that is always the first thing. We always look at what you're currently thinking about the situation. Then we know where to start. We got to see what those current thoughts are creating for us in our current day, in our current life, right? And then we get to make a decision together on what the next step is. Do you want to change your thoughts? Do you want to be here in acceptance? Do you want to learn how to feel the feelings? Whatever that is, we decide that together, okay? So a lot of times people come and they ask me for coaching, but they're not really coachable. (laughs) And I just kind of wanted to talk through that with you. So I've given you the background on the modality in which I coach. I use the model, the thought, feeling, action model, um, the self-coaching model that Brooke Castillo developed. And people come in and, you know, we get coaching for me either in like a free program or inside my coaching group. And there's some signs for me of people not being coachable. And I want you to recognize this for yourself if you're getting coached or you're coaching yourself. So sometimes when people come in, they say, okay, Angela, this is the situation. Say, um, you know, my brother-in-law drinks a lot and I'm trying not to drink. And, you know, I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to say no to him when he comes over to my house this weekend for a party and he's very difficult to be around. He's kind of like a bully and um, he teases me and stuff and it just makes it really, really hard. All right, so this is sort of like they're telling me the situation, okay? And then I would offer coaching back. I'm like, okay, so when you think this is really, this makes it really hard and you give him that power of you not being able to drink or, you know, you saying no to drink and you say it's hard when he does these things, how do you feel? And then the answer usually is like frustrated or anxious or pissed or angry, right? I'm like, okay. And when you feel that way, what do you do? And usually the answer is, well, I would want to drink (laughs) when I feel that way, right? And I show that to them and then I offer a suggestion. They come back and they would be like, no, 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 that's not the problem. The problem is I just need tools on how not to drink. And then I'll come back another time of like, well, it's easier to not drink and to follow through on what you want to do if you change the way you're thinking about your brother-in-law. And they're like, no, 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 I just, this, that's not what I'm asking. So, so that is a perfect example of not being coachable. They come in with an agenda thinking that they need one specific set of advice or they're looking for a very specific answer to a question. And my job is to show you kind of what you might be missing here, like the right questions to ask instead of focusing on one specific area, right? So like I am zoomed out. I'm away from the problem. I can see the problem in a much clearer way than you can. And I always know that our thoughts create our results. That's how I coach. So that's where I'm going to go first. And a lot of times we can't see that in our own problems, right? I I can't see it with myself sometimes. I still get coaching to help me see it clearer, right? The coach can help you see where your obstacles are when you can't see them yourself. So if you're not open to thinking about it and like open to what the coach says in what they're coaching you on, you're probably not super coachable in that moment right? When you go into coaching, you want to be open to maybe seeing things that you're not seeing and getting answers to your questions because you don't, and like kind of think of it as like, I don't even, I'm asking the wrong question, right? I'm asking for the wrong advice because I don't even know what advice I really need here. That's why I have a coach to help guide me and to show me what the real situation is so I can get the best results for myself. But if you come into it and you don't accept the coach's response or what they're saying, 
right, and you fight and you're like you have an agenda about what, exactly what you're looking for, that's just a red flag. Like if you feel uncomfortable about it or you don't like it, like that would just dig a little deeper there. Like ask yourself, why am I so resistant to this answer? <laughs> you know, like what you don't want to accept, that's usually what you want to lean into and like take to the next level and evaluate a little bit for yourself, right? So like when I'm getting advice or if I'm getting coaching and I'm like, when the coach tells me like what they're seeing, it's usually a really good sign that's my area. That's my pain point. Then I just haven't seen it yet. Okay. So I'm coachable because I'm like, okay, this is uncomfortable, but I'm hearing you. All right. I'm, I'm listening, right? Like I'm open to seeing this differently. That's why I hired a coach, right? That's what the advice I want to give you if you are in a coaching relationship, whether it's me, yourself coaching yourself, you have hired the coach or you're in a coaching relationship because you want help in seeing things that you can't see, right? And when you are all in on that relationship, you can get much faster results than you can on your own. And if you're open to seeing things differently, it can be a very beautiful thing. But why just, you know, one of the reasons why I did this podcast this week is because I've been running into this a little bit lately. So I wanted to make sure that you understand what mindset coaching is and what being like not coachable looks like if you're in that type of situation and how you can be more coachable. So the the last part, like how to be more coachable is being open to feeling uncomfortable when you get coaching. <laughs> be open to to knowing that you can't see the whole picture because you're so much you're so close to the problem. Okay. So anyway, that's that's really what I wanted to talk to you all about on the podcast today. What specifically is mindset coaching? I always help you get to the root of what you are thinking and feeling that, that will need to drive the actions that you need to take, whether it's stopping over drinking, losing weight, you know, making money in your business, improving your relationships, going for that next promotion, starting a side gig, whatever it is. I will always go back to that modality of what are you currently thinking about this thing that you're about ready to take on? How does it make you feel? And then let's see what actions you come from, okay? I'm never going to be somebody that just comes in and says, this is exactly what you need to do. Follow this recipe and you'll be successful. Because that doesn't set you up for success. That doesn't empower you to learn how to solve your own problems. That just makes you need me forever <laughs> to tell you what to do. And my job, and I believe that the best way I can help people is helping them solve their own problems, helping them know that their answers to fixing everything that they want to fix or improving anything they want to improve lies within them in their own brains. And I can offer suggestions about how to think about things differently, but really that work is yours. My job is to show you what you're currently thinking, offer some ideas and and shifts that you could make, um, teach you about how to do this work and putting it into practice, right? So anyway, that's what I have for you today, my friends. Remember to sign up for the masterclass. It's not about the alcohol in the show notes below where we dig into this a little bit more. You can see um, and get a taste of how I coach. Um, you know, people come on there and, and tell me all the things and I give it real examples of what that coaching looks like mindset coaching looks like on these free classes. So if you've been thinking about joining my coaching program or you would like to get a taste of what that looks before you you commit to me for six months, I highly, highly recommend that you do that. All right, my friends, have a beautiful week and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.